Hey friends, this is Ifa and welcome and welcome back to another video. It's unbelievable how times are flying by. I'm finishing my 6th bullet journal within 6 years. I used the same bujos for different years and I skipped some months before 2021. Today I'm setting up a new bullet journal which is the Suki Winter Wishes from Notebook Therapy in size A5. They released the whole collection last month and kindly gifted me a set. This cute notebook comes with a cute penguin shaped paper clip which is very very adorable. Before starting, let's have a look at my previous bujos and decide what to keep for the next with me. It's the first yearly bujo setup that I used. I'll keep the cover page, keys and grid spacing cheat sheet and I think the new versions are slightly different from these. I'll stick to the layout for my future log and keep the goal spread as it is. I'll cut off the affirmations, things to check and habit spreads because they don't have worked very well for me. Yearly content spreads are one of my important spreads so I'll keep it too. Then the period and expense trackers are also checked. In my second half of Bujo, I repeated some of these spreads. I'll make this kind of layout for both of my cover and keys. I'm also thinking about making this loose grid spacing cheat sheet. Three more spreads will be included in this setup which are monthly realization, memories and accomplishments. I'll describe them while making these spreads. Oh, this pretty pencil bag is also in the set from the notebook therapy. If you are willing to buy any products from them, use my affiliate code TRIDOVAS10. You'll get 10% off and I might receive a little commission. Let's start setting this new notebook by writing my name, which is the most satisfying thing of starting a brand new notebook. I'm using Tombo Furonsky Heart Tip brush pen for this. I won't decorate this page that much because I love the simplicity of it. The supplies I'm using for this setup are listed in the description. I've chosen navy blue as the main color of this setup. I wanted to match the scheme with the cover color and I never made a blue theme before so I'm a little scared thinking about how it'll turn out. For the cover page, I'm doing a merged version of my 2021 yearly covers. It's both bubbly and floral like the previous ones. I'm using a navy blue fine liner to draw the numbers at first and will use a similar colored paint pen to fill the negative spaces. Basically, I'll leave the florals in white when it's up on the numbers. It took me a while to sketch these numbers as three of them are two and it was a little hard to make them triplets. I tried as much as I could. For my keys, I'll make a simple header with same font. My keys have changed a lot over the past years and I'm stuck into this set of keys. If you're new in bullet journaling, you must know what's the purpose of the keys. Keys are the notations for the stage of your task, whether it's finished or ongoing or it's have been migrated forward or scheduled before. Something like that. And I use birthday and even notations too. I'm using a gray brush pen and white gel pen to make a lifted effect on the headers. For that, I place the white strokes on the right top of each letter and place the drop shadows on the left bottoms. It looks like the lights are coming from the right top. For more decoration, I'm using the Dream of No washi tape set from Notebook Therapy and Summer Solstice washi tapes from the washi tape shop. I've got a coupon code for the washi tape shop products too. You can use Tridobus 10 for 10% 10 off in any purchase while checking out. For the grid spacing cheat sheet, I've got off a page from the back. This is inspired by Laura from Iron Foxes. I'm counting and placing a number on each grid. Some people count the dots but I always go with the grids because it's more reasonable to me. I'm making a vertical grid spacing on this side and horizontal on the other side. This notebook has 26 grids horizontally and 38 vertically so I'm making this center point at 13th and 19th grid respectively. 
In the next, I'm making three separations for dividing the thirds and four separations for quarter of the page. Besides each divider, I am drawing lines with one grid gap in between the separators. I use this page while making my layouts, especially the weeklies. I align this page and draw the points where I need. On the other hand, I am pointing out all the center, taking the middle like before, then I'll go with the half, third and quarter again. I don't use quarter for my dailies, but let's see when it becomes useful. I'm using different shades just to make it visible and easy to differentiate. For the pocket, I'm using a normal printer paper and cutting it into a shape that fits to the page. It's a simple trick to cut a thin paper with a ruler where the side of the paper isn't visible, like this Wembley cut will be in the inner side of the pocket. I'm measuring the width for visible side with this washi tape's width. Then I'll space out the sides which are important to fit the paper inside. I'm using double sided tips for securing it and cutting the top and bottom of the page a little so that it fits the page properly. I'm sticking the paper with a thin washi tape so that it doesn't slide out. This washi tape is one of my favorites and I wanted to use this part fully somewhere without any cuts. The next spread is my monthly at a glance page. I don't want to write all the calendars again and again so I decided to use stickers instead. I made this drawing of all the numbers by hand and it doesn't take too much time to copy and paste and cut the columns where it fits. But I made a mistake using a background which made it kinda yellowish. I should have printed without any background. I wanted to use matte sticker paper but this glossy sticker paper set has a whole new story. I ordered a matte sticker paper set on 11.11 sale from a large online shop in Bangladesh and the seller sent a glossy one and changed the title and images later. And I talked to them, they argued a lot and finally I had to report on them on the customer care of the online marketplace and they said the seller is wrong and they'll take steps. I don't know they have or not but who cares and I couldn't return the product because the packet it came with was thrown away. It's not that bad but glossy stickers are not my thing. On the next spread, I'm making my future log with the same layout as 2021. I don't use the future log that much because my future is very uncertain and, and changes rapidly from the way I plan. I'm using larger clear stamps which ate up all the spaces in the bottom but I know I won't use the notebook from October because I know it will be out of paper before October comes. Let's move on to my monthly realization spread, which is an alternative of affirmation. I love the simplicity of this spread and will love to fill it every month.
The next part is my goals and how to achieve the goal spread. I genuinely feel I really need smaller goals instead of bigger ones. I still couldn't make workout as my habit in the last months which made me very sad and I'm willing to make this goal for the next year. On the worst side, I believe I'm making a spread which is inspired by Julia from Some Kind Words. I'll write a simple comparison of these years and the new year to see my growth on any topic. The next word is very important to me. I'm trying to be active on social media. It's hard to keep track of everything. Also, so many ideas run in my head and later I forget while I actually need them. I'm dedicating a whole spread for YouTube and another spread for the rest. I'll plan out the videos monthly but I'll write the ideas and uploaded videos here like a Kanban board. Basically, the Reels section represents the TikTok and Shorts also. I'm making small trackers in both spreads. I'm not gonna expect too much this year, so the trackers are minimal spaces for it. The very next spread is Expense Tracker. I only use an annual expense tracker as I live with my family and I only need to calculate my shoppings and extras that I spend on any supplies and products. I have divided it into 5 columns, number of spending, the name of the product, some description or details if I want to write them, and the price and saved amount in any discount or something that I've listed and later cancel it from buying. The next part is my period tracker. I'm making 365 dots for 365 days. I don't want to feel bored using this so I have bolded some of the dots and made a pattern. I'll circle over the dots while I'm going through my period. I used a tracker app so far but the app data can be lost anytime so I'm thinking to track it manually. The last spread is my memory page. I don't know how many months I'm gonna use this so I've decided to lift it empty with the headers for now. Later I'll decorate with washi tapes, pictures after a month's interval. Let's do a quick flip through of the whole setup. I generally don't rely on artificial lighting but it was quite dark outside and had to depend on the ring light. I hope it doesn't bother you that much. If you like this video, please press the like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Stay tuned for more and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!